See this weird grayish lump lying on the ground and steaming? Well, what are you waiting for? Run as fast as you can! It can burst right into your face at any moment, leading to horrifying consequences. A disaster is unfolding in front of your eyes. At first, the ground starts trembling. A deep rumbling sound echoed through the valley. Then, boom, the volcano explodes, hurling glowing rocks high into the sky. Among them is a blob of molten rock, fresh from the Earth's fiery depths. As it's soaring, the blob begins to change. The cold air wraps around it, hardening its outer layer, while the inside remains hot and gooey. Some of its neighbors are different. Some have gas bubbles trapped inside. Others have solid rock cores, and a few stretch into long, twisting ribbons. The biggest of these flying blobs are as large as a small car. For 10 long seconds, the lava blob is flying and twisting and tumbling. Below, people begin to realize the extent of the danger and start scattering. It's useless. Flying blobs can travel for miles, up to 6 miles away to be precise. Then the moment comes. The lava blob slams into the ground. Some of its smaller companions have cooled completely and landed with a thud. But this one is still burning inside a crystalline container called a bleb. As it strikes the earth, its hard shell cracks and molten lava oozes out, sizzling and steaming, spreading out like a giant fiery pancake. The eruption is passed, but the danger remains. Lava bombs, though fascinating, are among the most dangerous tricks of a volcano. The insides of the biggest blobs remain blazing hot, still bubbling with energy. They're not just warm, the temperature inside reaches hundreds of degrees. If one of these fiery projectiles struck a person, it would crush them instantly. Even worse, lava bombs can blow apart or cause secondary explosions in two cases. If the lava bomb has volcanic gases, like water vapor, CO2, or sulfur gases inside, rapid cooling can trap them. When pressure builds up, it can cause the bomb to burst. Or if a hot lava bomb lands in water or ice, the sudden temperature change can create steam explosions, sending debris flying. Lava blebs come in different shapes, depending on how fluid the magma was when it was ejected. Their forms are also shaped by how they travel through the air and how they land. Ribbon blebs form when very fluid magma is thrown out in long, stretchy blobs. As these break apart in midair, they create thin ribbon-like fragments that land intact. These blebs often have fluted textures and small air pockets inside. Spherical blebs also come from highly fluid magma, but instead of forming ribbons, they're shaped by surface tension, which pulls them into nearly perfect spheres as they cool. Spindle or almond-shaped lava blebs start off similarly to spherical ones. But as they spin through the air, they stretch into elongated football-like shapes. One size usually ends up smoother than the other, showing how it moved when it fell. Cow pie blebs, yep, the real name for them, form when very liquid lava doesn't cool before hitting the ground. Instead of solidifying in the air, it lands while still molten and flattens on impact, spreading out in irregular roundish shapes that resemble, you know, cow patties. There are also bread crust blebs that occur when the outer layer of a lava bomb hardens during flight while the inside remains hot. As the interior expands, it cracks the hardened shell, giving it a texture similar to the crust of a loaf of bread. Cored lava bombs have a hardened shell surrounding an inner core made of older volcanic rock, pieces from an earlier eruption, or even fragments of the surrounding landscape. Whatever shape a lava blob takes, you should watch out for one during a volcanic eruption, even if you're miles away from the epicenter. But lava blebs aren't the only danger you should watch for when wandering around volcanoes. Sometimes, when small drops of lava are thrown from a volcano, they can stretch into thin, elongated shapes as they cool. If they form small, teardrop-like shapes, they're called Pele's Tears, after the Hawaiian volcano and fire deity. If they become longer, thinner strands, they're known as Pele's hair. In this case, you can notice something that looks like golden mats of fine hair covering the ground. These aren't strands of human or animal hair, but delicate threads of volcanic glass. They form when gas bubbles and lava burst, stretching the molten rock into long, hair-like fibers. Pele's hair can be incredibly thin, sometimes just one micron thick. But at the same time, they can reach up to a couple of feet in length. 
They are so lightweight that the wind can easily carry them through the air. Later, they settle in low-lying areas, sometimes piling up in thick layers. Now, despite their delicate appearance, these strands are actually tiny pieces of glass. They are sharp and brittle, and if they get on the skin, they can cause irritation. If they get into the eyes, they can be even more dangerous. That's why it's very important to be cautious when around Pele's hair. Now imagine a tidal wave of fire and ash racing down a mountain with unstoppable force. This is a pyroclastic flow, a fast-moving surge of scorching gases and shattered rock that buries everything in its path. These flows can stretch for miles, moving as fast as a racing car and reaching temperatures hot enough to melt metal, up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Pyroclastic flows strike without warning. The collapse of an erupting volcano's towering ash column or a lava dome, a massive plug of hardened lava sitting at the volcano's mouth, can easily trigger one. The moment it gives way, the fiery avalanche is unleashed, rolling down the slopes with terrifying speed, vaporizing forests, flattening villages, and incinerating anything caught in its path. There is no outrunning of pyroclastic flow. It is the most fatal force a volcano can unleash, responsible for claiming over 90,000 lives in the past 400 years. That's one-third of all volcanic fatalities. Not only do these flows burn, crush, and suffocate, but they also destroy buildings, bridges, and anything human-made. While scientists can predict the most likely paths, usually along valleys, history has shown that powerful flows can jump bridges, sweep over hills, and strike areas we once thought were safe. Volcanic lightning isn't as dangerous as a pyroclastic flow, but it's a breathtaking view. It forms only in the thick ash-filled clouds that erupt from certain volcanoes. These towering columns, called volcanic plumes, shoot up into the sky when a volcano releases massive amounts of ash. Not all volcanoes create these plumes. That's why volcanic lightning is rare. For example, the volcanoes in Hawaii mostly erupt with flowing lava rather than thick clouds of ash, so they almost never produce volcanic lightning. Now look at these tiny ash particles. Before an eruption, they're squeezed together inside the volcano under extreme pressure. But when they burst into the open air, they collide and rub against each other in a process known as friction. This friction charges the particles, just like when you rub a balloon on your hair. As these charged particles rise into the air, they start to separate. Positive charges move one way, and negative charges move in a different direction. When the difference in charge becomes too great, the energy bursts free as a lightning bolt, cutting through the volcanic plume. Some of the most devastating consequences of a volcanic eruption are lahars. A lahar is a powerful, fast-moving river of mud, ash, and rock that rushes down the slopes of a volcano, destroying everything in front of it. These terrifying mud flows form when heavy rains mix with loose volcanic debris. When lahars sometimes happen during an eruption, they can also strike without warning. This makes them especially dangerous. Like pyroclastic flows, lahars move fast, sometimes traveling hundreds of miles. They can bury entire towns, sweep away bridges, and wipe out roads, leaving behind a deep layer of mud and rock. One of the most devastating lahar disasters happened in Colombia in 1985, when the Nevado del Ruiz volcano unleashed a mud flow that buried the town of Armero, taking the lives of over 23,000 people. Another tragic event occurred in the 1990s, when lahars and pyroclastic flows from the Sofriere Hills volcano wiped out the capital city of Plymouth, causing $500 million in damage. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.